Isaiah said that the Lord spoke to the king and said, Ask a sign of the Lord your God. But when the king refused, God would not be stopped. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Look, the young woman is with child and shall bear a son and shall name him Emmanuel. God sends us signs of God's presence with us. All we need to do is keep our eyes open and look. We light these candles, the candle of hope, of peace, of joy, and today of love, as a sign that no matter our circumstances, God loves us and we are not alone. Prayer. Gracious God, as we come to worship, we pray that all that we say and do glorifies you. We pray that your spirit might reign in our midst. And Lord, we are so grateful for the messengers of your message today. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So at this time, I'd like to invite the kids forward, and they're going to take their places. Should we get started? Oops. Not everyone's here. Who are we missing? Yummy, of course. That's the, that's the problem with eternity. What do you mean? No one has any sense of time. Let's get started. We've been asked to come up with an idea to single creation a savior is coming to earth. So what are your ideas, Declan? We're talking about Jesus, right? Yes. Why do we need a sign? Jesus should just appear in the sky, and there should be thunder and lightning, and make people blow out of their houses, making them look up. And we could surround him flying and singing and blowing trumpets. No, no, no. When Jesus has everyone's attention, he could just be like, hey, I'm Jesus. I'm your savior. Follow me. The angels all think Declan is nuts. It's just an idea. I still think there should be music. Remember, there are no bad ideas when you're brainstorming. Who else? You didn't write my idea on the board. Who's next? He could slide down on a rainbow and throw can out candy to little kids. I think it should be gummy bears, rainbow gummy bears. Or M&Ms. Wait, again, he, do, he doesn't just show up. It's a sign and rainbows had already been used. Who else has an idea? Eliana? How about we rent a little plane that drags a sun behind it or a sky rider? That's a great idea. Mariah, we should put that down. That's a great idea, but what year is it down? It's still BC. There are no planes or helicopters. Oh. 
all cars, all trucks. Sorry I'm late. I lost track of time. <laughs> There's no time. Very old joke. So we're trying to t we're trying to come up with a birth announcement a birth announcement for Jesus. What ideas do you have so far? Something that makes people look up. Like a star? Like, like a star. star. That's, That's it. it. A star shines light for people walking in the darkness. And gives directions. And shows the way. And burns hot and gives warmth. Like God's love, everyone celebrates. Great idea, Yummy. You're welcome. <laughs> or we could do shooting stars with lasers. No. no! Let's sing a song. Please turn to hymn 162, and let's all sing the first Noel. Please join me for our scripture reading this morning from Isaiah 7, 10 to 16. Again, the Lord spoke to Ahaz, saying, Ask a sign of the Lord your God. Let it be deep as Sheol, or high as heaven. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, and I will not put the Lord to the test. Then Isaiah said, Hear then, O house of David, is it too little for you to weary mortals, that you weary my God also? Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Look, the young woman is with child and shall bear a son and shall name him Emmanuel. He shall eat curds and honey by the time he knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good. For before he, the child knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land before whose two kings you are in dread will be deserted. And let us join our hearts in prayer. Gracious God, I pray the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts might be acceptable in your sight, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Ask for a sign. Isaiah tells King Ahaz from God, ask for a sign. And Ahaz says, no, I don't want to ask for a sign. And God says, well, I'm going to give you a sign anyway. In the story that... In our Christmas story, there's a sign in the sky, and a, most people miss it. And what's really interesting, the people of faith don't see it at all. It's three people, three you know, from a distant land, different faith. They notice, which is humbling for all of us you know, religious types who, you know, who are, are, are devout. We can miss things. But today's message is to... Ask for a sign. I'm always, you hear, I say this all the time. Dear Lord, that may we have eyes that see and ears that hear all the ways that you're trying to bless us and love on us. We worship the living God. So I, I thought I would share just a few stories of uh, God giving signs. <laughs> Can you hear the kids? Years ago, and I was a pastor for 17 years in Wharton, and I've told this story before. Uh, I think, but assuming that not everybody was here to hear it. A woman in my congregation, early 30s, had a head-on car crash. She was helivacked, right, in the helicopter taken to Morristown Memorial. I was given a phone call. I rushed over. I got to pray with her and, like, the six doctors that went in with her. Every, every limb but one had broken bones. She had internal damage. And the next year, she was, went from hospital to rehab to hospital, and 
Um, so I journeyed, took that journey with her. And one hospital visit, I walked in, and oh, gosh, I could just tell. You know, it's up and down. And she was just in a dark, dark place. And, you know, and before I asked, I knew the answer before I asked, so how are you? And she, she looked and she's like, I am done. And she was angry at God and the world. She's like, I have nothing left. I have been strong. I have been courageous. I have been brave. And I am done. And I did nothing to deserve this. And life is not fair. And this stinks. And as she's going on and on, I'm praying, oh, Lord, help. <laughs> Lord, help. Because I'm going to have to say something at some point. Help. What does she need to hear? So when she was done, and I said, you want to pray? And, and her, you know, her face was like, Pfft. Sure, whatever. And I said, so let us pray. And I said, okay, Lord, you heard her. She's done. And you're going to have to carry her. And I believe that you have. But you are going to need to give her some sign that you are here and that you are with her. And that, and, you know, life is not fair, Lord. And, but I do not believe that you did this to her, but you do promise us to be with us through whatever life throws at us. Unbeknownst to me, she didn't tell me then. She told me months later. I think it was at the service when I was leaving. Uh, she stood up and, and shared the story. While I was praying with her, I, I, a tear came down my cheek. That was her sign. That was her sign. You can't plan this stuff. I had no idea, but you know that I that I get to represent Jesus and walk in the room and say a prayer with her. That was the sign that she needed to know that God was with her in it. Amazing. And the next time I visited her, she was good. But you know, it's a journey like this. Last week, I shared in the sermon, and it's so interesting. I wasn't I wasn't sure I wanted to share it, but I went for it. I was last week's theme was joy. And so I was talking about all that's wrong with the world, but there's still a lot to be joyful for. And one of the things I shared was that I love honest Christians. I think as, as a kid, I had a disdain for people who just had that smile on and say, you know, I have Jesus, so I have no problems. And I was always like, I know your kids. I know you do. <laughs> right? And so I said, in, in grief group, uh, somebody shared, and I was corrected, because what I said last week was, I'm angry with God, I don't want to pray, but I still have faith. It was, I'm angry with God, I can't find the words, I still have faith. But I shared that, and then somebody who I had been praying for from a former congregation who lost her son this last year tragically and has been so angry at God, I preached a sermon for her months ago, hoping that she would tune into it. Um, I don't think she did, and I, she probably wouldn't have been ready to hear it anyway. But this past week, I got a text. I was on YouTube, and your sermon was suggested to me, and I watched it, and it spoke to me, and thank you. I was, you know, and, and you're just like, oh, my God. We worship the living God. Ask for a sign. And then I was reading Grace Upon Grace, which is your church newsletter. It's, real, it's more like a literary magazine, and it is the most stellar church newsletter I have ever seen because you're sharing your faith and you're telling your stories and you're sharing your poems, and it's, it's gorgeous. And two things popped out. And uh, I, the story of uh, Julie, Do J Do Julie De Doan, sharing the story of having a really bad day, uh, the passing of her daughter, Caitlin, for whom we have flowers this morning. And there's a scripture passage from 2 Corinthians that always brought comfort. It was not bringing comfort. And then in comes Alex Sampson as a, as a patient. And then in the course of the conversation, quotes that same scripture passage, and it takes wings, and it lands in her heart and gives her comfort. Oh, my Lord, we worship the living God. Ask for a sign. And then 
Um, and also, uh, Emmy, you wrote, uh, even though I hadn't asked God, God was generously taking care of me. And I thought, yeah, that's God too. We worship the living God. Ask for a sign. In this season of Christmas where there's all this hustle and bustle and we're trying to make everything lovely and perfect and create wonderful memories for our families, I pray that everybody has just one moment, just one moment where you can breathe deeply and it's just so apparent to you that we worship the living God. Here's a a poem by May Sarton, and this is her moment. When everyone had gone, I sat in the library with a small, silent tree, she and I alone. How softly she she shone. And for the first time then, for the first time this year, I felt reborn again. I knew love's presence near. Love distant, love detached, had strangely without weight, was with me in the night when everyone had gone and the garland of pure light stayed on. Stayed on. I pray that you have eyes that see and ears that hear that God is, that God is with, and Christ is born. In Jesus' name, amen. And so now we're going to uh, listen to these, the birth narrative of Christ from Scripture um, read, and the kids are going to act it out for us, and there's going to be lots of music in between. So I'll, I would uh, ask that the narrators, narrators come take their places. God sent the angel Gabriel to the village of Nazareth and to a virgin engaged to be married to a man descended from David. His name was Joseph, and the girl's name, Mary. Upon entering, Gabriel greeted her. Good morning. You're beautiful with God's beauty. beauty. Beautiful inside and out. God be with you. She was thoroughly shaken, wondering what was behind a greeting like that, but the angel assured her. Mary, you have nothing to fear. God has a surprise for you. You will become pregnant and give birth to a son and call his name Jesus. He will be great, be called Son of the Highest. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. He will rule Jacob's house forever, no end ever to his kingdom. Mary said to the angel, But how? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, the power of the highest hover over you. Therefore, the child you bring to birth will be called Holy Son of God. Nothing, you see, is impossible with God. And Mary said, Yes, I see it all now. I am the Lord's maid, ready to serve. Let it be with me just as you say. And then the angel left her. Jesus' mother, Mary, was engaged to be married to Joseph. Before they enjoyed their wedding night, Joseph discovered she was pregnant. It was by the Holy Spirit, but he didn't know that. Joseph, chagrined but noble, determined to take care of things quietly so Mary would not be disgraced. While he was trying to figure, out, to figure a way out, he had a dream. God's angels spoke in the dream. Joseph, son of David, don't hesitate to get married. Mary's pregnancy is spirit-conceived. God's Holy Spirit has made her pregnant. She will bring a son to birth, and when she does, you, Joseph, will name him Jesus. God saves, because he will save his people from their sins. 
Then Joseph woke up. He did exactly what God's angel commanded in the dream. He married Mary. About that time, Caesar Augustus ordered a census to be taken throughout the empire. This was the first census when Quirinius was governor of Syria. Everyone had to travel to his own ancestral hometown to be accounted for. So Joseph went from the Galilean town of Nazareth to Bethlehem in Judah, David's town, for the census. As a descendant of David, he had to go there. He went with Mary, who was pregnant. While they were there, the time came for her to give birth. She gave birth to her son, her firstborn. She wrapped him in a blanket and laid him in a manger. There were shepherds camping in the neighborhood. They had set night watches over their sheep. Suddenly, God's angel stood among them, and God's glory blazed around them. They were terrified. The angel said, Don't be afraid. I, I'm here to announce a great and joyful event that, th that is meant for everybody worldwide. A Savior has just been born in David's town. A Savior who is Messiah and Master. This is what you're, you're to look for. A baby wrapped in a blanket and lying in a manger. At once, the angel was joined by a huge angelic choir singing the God's praises. Glory to God in heavenly heights, peace to all men and women on earth who please him. As the angel choir withdrew into heaven, the shepherds talked it over. Let's get over to Bethlehem as fast as we can and see for ourselves what God has revealed to us. They left, running, and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. Seeing was believing. They told everyone they met what the angels had said about this child. All who heard the shepherds were impressed. Mary kept all these things to herself, holding them dear, deep within herself. The shepherds returned and let loose, glorifying and praising God for everything they had heard and seen. It turned out exactly the way they'd been told. 